Hello everybody, Marty McConnell, the Off Grid Gecko here. Um, today I'm going to be starting a new series on um, wild things. Uh, basically, uh, this 100% primitive series is going to be on a topic that I think a lot of people want to do for a series, but um, I see people falling short on many occasions. There's some people that do it really quite well, um, but it's a, a pursuit of mine that's been something that I've wanted to do since childhood. And I'm sorry for the lighting, the sun's behind me, but I just want everything out here basically to see. So um, these are some primitive tools that I've made so far with just sticks and stones. And I have several um, stone knives laying around, but uh, everybody's got to start at the beginning. So what's the beginning? I think the beginning has goes back to using a simple stick like we see chimpanzees use you dig down into a, a burrow of like termites and you pull termites out of their mound because they start attacking the stick you just pull them out and then you got a quick snack um, this one I actually kicked over so this was a living tree and just by working it back and forth, I snapped it off here at the bottom. So that's why it's got all the roots still attached. Because it was basically just break it off. And then the dirt around it kind of loosened up while it was breaking as well. Um, so I just pulled it out of the earth just like this. Um, and this is not a perfectly straight tree. But straight enough for our purposes for this video. For smaller sticks, is just stand on one end. And fold it over until it breaks. This is obviously easier once it's been dry for a bit. Then just flip it over, put your foot in the same spot, and break it off the other side. Get out of the way, TP. And then you can kind of twist the end to pop it loose, just like that. Now, as you get to bigger, heavier ends, this becomes increasingly more difficult to do. So we may not be able to get this right here. I don't know. Maybe. And this is a birch tree, so it's breaking fairly easy. Um, depending on the tree species, you're going to get different results. And generally speaking, the harder it is to, um, to work the material, the more valuable that material can be. And it really doesn't take very long. It takes almost no calories at all to do it. And at the end, you're left with a stick. Now... A spear is kind of a cool thing anyways, but you'll notice we've got this frayed edge. We don't have a spear. So this is where a rock comes in handy. Get that out of the way for a moment. Um, so we can actually use a piece of sandstone like this, and these are all over by the river, um, or by the creek bed down there, and basically just start working this. Again, you're not putting a whole lot of effort in this. It's hot out today and I don't want to sweat so I'm not going to go fast with this. I'll probably cut away from the video but basically just work this back and forth on the sand and you'll see these splinters are basically going to start falling off the edge and um, falling apart. Now as far as getting the bark off um, you can scrape it off with a broken piece of rock. So just throw a rock against the against another rock and break it And then you can use a sharp end of that To start scraping bark off. I don't want to get too much into napping and making um, stone knives because That is a topic that's going to take up just too much time for one video um, You can also peel these back a little bit these splinters if you can get a good hold on them and pull them back and that will make a break not only in the bark but because of run out um, that splinter is going to pull away a tapered end off the edge of this you're going to end up with these gouges in your stick but ultimately um, it's still going to accomplish the same purpose yeah so we can just peel this away basically and this alone is going to give us sort of a sharpened tip it's definitely going to make a, a long taper depending on how you pull these and you pull away just as much as you need because after a while you're just going to be basically splitting out the end of this but if you start with small pieces and pull then you can almost guarantee that these are going to run out before you get very far 
and so the smaller the, the fiber bundle that you grab onto and the closer it is to the edge of the stick, like the more tapered of an effect that you'll get. So the important thing for a throwing spear, because we're not putting any fletching on this, is you want the big heavy end, this end, um, as far as taper goes, is going to be your front and the little end is going to be your back. Now that might sound a little odd to some people. Um, why not just make the pointy end the pointy end? Well, because uh, it has to do with the ballistics of flight and like aerodynamics and how it works. Basically the center of mass needs to lead the center of pressure. And the center of pressure is a measure of like the drag all along the object that you're throwing. And the center of mass on this guy is, even with removing all this material, it's a little forward of center. So when I throw this, it's going to guarantee that it's going to fly straight instead of trying to weathercock and even flip all the way around the other way and then hit something sideways. So you'll figure that out pretty fast when you start throwing these things. That uh, It's better to have the heavy end forward. And stripping this off like this, also this long taper is not doing me any favors in that respect. But the simplest spears don't even have a stone or metal point. They just have a point carved into the wood. And you basically, once you get it down to a certain size, you just run it back and forth along this rock. And the only thing is the rock should probably be on the ground because it's the easiest. And when you grip it, you want to grip it where you're applying force kind of downward on it and just work it back and forth. And it doesn't have to be a ton of force. It's a fairly productive amount of work. It doesn't take a lot of time and energy. And that's one of the main things that I'm trying to set straight by doing this is a lot of times people put a lot more work into this stuff on YouTube videos than what ancient people probably would have. I mean, this is one of those things you can sit around by a fire at night and just rub this thing and not burn up a lot of calories doing it because calories are precious. And just right there in that short amount of time, we've got, you know, a fairly primitive little tip there. I could make it better and refine it, but why would we want to do that? That's just extra work. A blunter point will be stronger, but a narrower point will tend to cut better at whatever you're aiming it at. And I can vouch that these points are more than sharp enough to puncture an animal uh, quite well. You won't skewer it, but you will break through the skin, it will shatter bones, and it'll work its way into vital areas quite easily. So don't, uh, you know, when they say it's better than a pointed stick, pointed sticks can actually be pretty effective. Okay. So, as you can see, we have achieved penetration through four sheets of um, cardboard. That was from three yards. To throw a spear, this is something a lot of people for some reason are not familiar with. Um, there's a lot of people, you want to grab it back here because you feel like all the weight's in front of you and kind of just, or maybe guide it with your front hand or grab it in the front with both hands and just kind of wiggle it along like kind of sideways like this, which will work, but you're not going to get the maximum amount of force out of this. So the easiest way to do it is you got to find the balance point. So I'll hop it up in the air and you can always mark it later on to where you know roughly where your balance point is. And when you find that point where it balances and you let it dangle. So if there's a bow in it, then the bow is going to be up and the ends are going to be down because this is not a perfectly straight implement. So we can't go off perfectly straight theory here. You got to work with the material that you have and then just kind of grip it on the sides right there between your thumb and forefinger like this. Um, almost like you're holding a pencil to write with and sort of hold it back in your hand. So with your little fingers, just wrap them in front toward the pointy end. And then you've got a good solid grasp on the spear. So when you want to throw it, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm about 30 yards away from my target over there, so I'm probably not going to hit it. Well, maybe, maybe 15, 15 yards away from my target, so I'm not going to hit it, but just for funsies. 
when you throw it, what you want to do is, you know, start with it back just like you're throwing a baseball. And as you come forward, your front fingers will release. And the so they're guiding it to get it moving. And once it's moving, your front fingers will release. And you just kind of continue to push it until you can't anymore. And then just release with your fingers. So it's kind of a little dainty maneuver at the, at the end there. But it's not going to feel like one when you chuck it. Of course, if you're going for a ranged attack like this, you want to throw it sort of up. And that totally turned sideways. So, um, longer ranges, probably not the best weapon. So, that's almost addle addle time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's basically how you throw it. Now, my effective range with this weapon is like five to seven yards. Um, I hit my paper at five yards. So, uh, not super long range, basically for up close. And spears traditionally are more of a jabbing weapon anyways. They're not really made for throwing. So I'll do some more experimentation with rabbit sticks and see if maybe I can get a little range out of them. But for the most part, you're gonna if you're a primitive hunter with a totally primitive weapon like this, you're going to be sneaking up on your prey. But things like snakes and armadillos and sometimes rabbits, you can actually get close enough to these animals that you can either stick them or you only have to throw like two or three yards and just nail the target. So sneaking up on prey is an area that I'm not going to cover because it's a hunting thing. So you're probably better off listening to more experienced hunters on that issue. Right. Another thing is people would not only sharpen the point of their spear, but they would also sharpen the back of it is to use it as a walking stick. Um, and I mean, use your imagination. There's just a thousand different uses for a spear and that's going to be about it for this video. So that's making a simple spear in a matter of what, 10 minutes, you think? Was it 10 minutes? Rawr. She's like, I'll show you a spear. I'll bite your hand off. Get out of the way. Come over here. Come here. It can be used as a spear, and even though it's very small diameter, this can be a very effective means of taking game and uh, doing primitive things. And it makes an awesome walking stick too. So I may scrape the bark off this with some rocks, but we will get to um, rocks. So this is the sticks portion. We'll get to the stones in uh, another video. So, so far, knock a little baby sapling over let it dry out for a couple days, rub it on a piece of sandstone, and you've got an effective primitive weapon that can be used for numerous purposes. Um, so yeah, that's it, number one. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned, because we're going to be doing a whole lot more of this. Thanks. Bye. Bonus footage. So while we're on the subject, let's talk about uh, where weapons like this would have been used. So there is a species of modern chimpanzee. I believe, I don't know the name of the species, but they have been known to use primitive spears such as this, actually better than this one, um, to hunt small mammals and basically get them out of their burrows by jabbing the spear into the burrow to hit the animal and dragging it out. And these chimps actually construct the spears not with, not by rubbing them on another rock, but they will basically break off a tree branch similar to what we just did or pull up a tree and snap it somehow to make a good uh, decent length of stick and then they will chew around the end of the stick to put a point on it on the larger end and they'll strip off all the bark either by pulling it or scratching it with their teeth and to get a hold of the, the little pieces of bark and then just peeling it off they'll peel all the bark off sharpen it with their teeth and then they go around to holes where they know an animal's hiding in and they just jab it into the hole to get the animal nice and dead and then drag it out and they've got a meal. So I imagine for ancient people like that would be an interesting corollary is we can watch what modern animals are doing and we can get some idea as to the the use of primitive weapons like this even before stones were being used in number. So, sorry rocks, you are not the first human tools. Sticks are. Pointy sticks.
26 are good for a lot of things. 